covered the basics, we're now going to start looking at some of the more intermediate tools that are available to us in the modeling workspace. So to start with, what I'm going to do here is go over some shortcuts which will help speed up the process. So first of all, within our workspace here, we have two hotkeys that we need to work with. We've already looked at the basic tools in our E panel here. And if I use my hotkey of E, it brings up that tool panel to my cursor. And as I've mentioned, we've already looked at the majority of the tools in here. However, I'm now going to start focusing on the curves tool because the curves tool is one of the more powerful tools in this toolbox. So the first hotkey that we're going to need is the E panel to bring the option to choose the curves editor to our cursor. So let's do that now and press the curves editor. Now the curves editor gives us tools across the top of our menu here. Now I don't want each time I need one of these tools to have to go up to this top menu. So the next keyboard shortcut is Q on the keyboard, which essentially brings up the same panel with a few exceptions. So for example, here we have preserve shape and we have some coordinates of X, Y, and Z on the side here, as well as an on plane feature, which we've mentioned in previous videos. The Q menu brings only the tools to our cursor. If we do want the on plane feature, which we do need at times using the curve tool, we will have to come up to the main menu here, or we can assign a separate hotkey for this particular function. You can see where it says at the bottom of this dialog box, press the end key to define a hotkey for that particular function. So let's define a hotkey for the on plane function. Roll over the on plane text and press the end key on your keyboard. You'll get a second dialog box asking you to press a key or a combination of keys to define the new hotkey. And once you're happy or you want to cancel, press the escape key. So I'm going to choose Alt P. And you can see as soon as I pressed Alt P, that second dialog box disappeared. But now if I roll back over that on plane function, on the dialog box at the bottom, you can see the hotkey assigned Alt P. So now if I go over and move my mouse into this space and hit Alt P, now you can see I have my cursor has changed to include the on plane function. And at the top here, you can see I have a small tick in the checkbox for on plane. At times you'll need to turn off the on plane feature. So if we've got that selected, Alt P, and now I want to turn that off, you can come back up and uncheck this small checkbox here, or again, press Alt P to disable that function with your hotkey command. So to recap, we're going to use E on the keyboard to bring up our curves tool, which is this icon here. And then we're going to use Q to bring up the options available to us for the curves tool. And finally, Alt P to bring on the on plane feature for this particular tool. Now, before we start creating some curves, we need to have a couple more windows active. So on the right side here, you can see I have my curves tree active and I've docked it over on this side. If you don't have that, go over to windows panels and scroll down until you see curves tree. Once you select this, a curves tree window will pop up somewhere in the interface. And all you need to do then is click and drag that to the position you want to put it in. The next window that we're going to need is this curves menu option here in the top menu of our interface. If you click on this, you'll notice that your cursor changes to this four arrowed symbol. If you click onto that menu, you can drag this. Now this isn't a dockable window. It is a menu for you to work with. So I can still position this and it's good to have it active so we can move it temporarily when we're doing some specific things. For example, if we need to snap points together, we don't have to keep going to the top menu to just activate that option. Now again, you can see that 
any option that is in this menu, we can assign a hotkey so you have that option as well. What I wanted to just talk about before we actually start making our curves is the fact that we're going to be using these curves to construct our polygons. In previous videos, we were looking at how to create polygons and we use the various tools in our menu to create different types of polygons. Curves are vector based and they will help us to construct boundaries or guides for us to create our polygons within those boundaries and guides. That's why they are extremely powerful and give us more flexibility when creating smoother surfaces and more organic type shapes. So let's go ahead now and start making some curves. So I'm going to hit E on the keyboard, choose my curves, and I'm going to go up into the top right side of the UI here and turn on orthographic. Now when you're using curves, the axis that you can see down here are very important, as is having orthographic on. And we'll look at this shortly. Let's turn round and hit the X and work in the X axis here. So I'm going to hit this small X to move the widget so that I'm now looking down the X axis, as you can see here. You can see my grid line going across here. And if I hit the middle mouse button, you can see I can raise and lower that grid line. Let's hit Q on the keyboard and look at the options within the curves tool. To start with, let's keep things simple and choose this linear tool here. You can see that when I clicked on the Q menu, that this top menu updated. So let's make our first curve here. I click left clicking and then we just drag in the mouse to the next location and left clicking to place that next point and so on. And I can keep going. If I want to stop, let's say I want to end my curve here, I can simply hit escape on the keyboard. So with my cur first curve created, you can see that the curves tree has been populated with a layer called curve. You can change the name of these layers just by clicking and changing the name. I'm going to leave mine at curve for now. So let's look at the other tools that are available to us. Q on the keyboard and let's look at this option here. Now this is the editing option for these nodes that we have created here. So if I left click with this tool now, I can reposition. I'm going to be describing these as points from now on. Next, press Q on the keyboard and choose this arrow next to it. The arrow is a direct selection mode where I can click on the curve itself to select all aspects of that curve. You'll notice that the curve layer in the curves tree also selected when I did that. Let's repeat that. To deselect, just click anywhere in the, name, in the empty space. Alternatively, you can click on the curve within the curves tree to select that curve, use this small eye icon to hide that particular curve. And this becomes useful as we increase the number of curves in our curve tree. We've just used this linear curves tool here. I'm now going to use this spline tool. So with this new option selected here, I'm now going to left click and start to create a different kind of curve. And you can see that every time I press the left mouse button, a smoother curve is generated. And here we have a brand new layer with its own visibility icon. So the first curve we created is at the top of our stack and we're basically moving down with every new curve we create. If I select both of these curves, you can see they have different colors to show they are separate curves. Q key. I'll now click on the spline curve that we created. And again, just like before, Q, use the edit points and I can move these points around. The final curve that we'll look at here is the B spline curve. Q and choose this option here. And now I'll start to create a B spline. Escape to drop. And you'll notice that this tool, that this curve 
is different again. Q, edit points, and now I'm editing these points in the same way, but the curve is reacting in a much smoother way than the spline. So it's a good idea for you to just start generating some of these curves and practice with the different types of curves that we've looked at and look at how they are structured in the curves tree and how we can turn these on and off and just familiarize yourself with editing these curves with the tools that we've looked at so far. If we hit Q to bring up our Q tools here, we can see we have this option here, which looks like a squiggly line. If I select this one, this gives me a freeform curve. Basically, I can draw this curve with my mouse or stylus. And I don't have to plot the points as I was doing with the other three curves. So here, with this freeform curve here, I'm just going to left click and start to move my mouse around and draw a curve. Now, the freeform curve, as you can see, has extra functions to it. And we'll look at these a little bit later. But essentially, you could see that when I started, I had many points being generated as it was tracking my mouse movement. After I let go of the mouse, it simplified that path that I took with the mouse and generated as few points as it possibly could to recreate that path. These options here allow us to alter those properties which smooth out and track our mouse movement. As I mentioned, we'll look at this a little later. So to recap, you can see here that I've labeled my curves now. We have our linear curve, the spline curve, the B-spline curve, and the freeform curve. And those are located here in the top menu or in the Q tools here. We have those situated here across on the top row of our Q menu, as well as our direct selection and our point editing tool here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we've been using the orthographic view here, as well as working in our x-axis if we rotate the camera around, you can see if I look at the z-axis here and I'm looking straight down the z-axis, all the curves that I've generated have been on one single plane. And this is one of the advantages of using the orthographic view along with working in an actual axis. For example, we use the x-axis. So if I snap back to the x-axis, we can see the curves that we generated clearly. If I move into a more of a perspective type view here and change my orthographic to a perspective view, now we can see those curves in the 3D space more clearly. So essentially, when I'm working in an orthographic view down a particular axis, I'm working in more of a 2D environment, even though I'm actually in a 3D environment. It's forcing me to work within this plane, within this axis. If I was to start creating a new curve, let's choose our spline curve here and start to work inside this view here and press escape. You can see that the new curve that I generated was based on my camera view at the time of that curve generation. Now this can be useful in certain circumstances, but if you're trying to control that line, then it's going to be easier for you, especially as a beginner, to work in an orthographic view and understand the relationship of those curves to each other before trying to advance to working in a camera projected view. Now, sometimes when we're working, accidents happen and we may find that some of these points aren't quite aligned properly. We may have moved them whilst moving the camera around by accident. I'm going to hit Q and use my point editing tool and I'm just going to move one of these points randomly off. So you can see now when I'm working down these, looking down the Z axis, that that point is now off center of the rest of my points. If I wanted to correct this and bring it back in line with the other 
points, I can select all these points here, Q, and hit this move tool here to bring up the widget. And now what I would have to do is position my widget over one of the points where I wanted to bring this stray point back to. So let's do that now. I'm going to hold down shift to move the widget only and then move it to this point here. It could be any one of these points which I want to move it to. And remember, I'm trying to move that stray point back in line with the other points. So now my widget is positioned correctly. I'm going to now use this scale tool here and I'm going to move that point back in line with the other ones like so. I'll hit escape and then it's returned its previous position. So what if I wanted to move this linear curve into a specific position on my grid? For example, what if I wanted to move this linear curve here to position zero in my 3D world space? To do that, I'm going to just turn on the hide show height axis here to show how far off this linear curve was from my main center of the world here at this point. Make sure that the curve is selected, hit Q, the move tool, and you can see that the widget has now been placed directly in line with our linear curve. So now all I have to do is zero out these values here, X, Y, and Z. So I'll just click in the field and enter a value of zero and hit escape to drop the move tool. And now I've positioned the whole of that curve in a specific location within the 3D world. We'll now look at how we can do the same thing uh, using that on plane shortcut that we set up earlier. So what I'll do now is I will click on Alt P to initiate the on plane feature. And because I'm looking down the X axis, I'm going to click on this option here to make sure that I'm working in the X axis plane. And now you can see that my cursor is showing me that plane that I'll be working in. So using the Q tools here and choosing the linear option for the curve, I'm going to start to create my curve basically mimicking the same one that we have here. Only this time, you can see that I have this option here called base, and in my X, Y, and Z values here, I need, I've got some values in here that I don't want, because I want, again, to be working in that center world position. So I'm going to zero these out, this time I've got this little X here that I can just click on to zero all those out. And I will bring back my axis here. And as you can see, I'm working in the X axis. So now I will start to draw out my linear curve using the on plane feature. And I'll hit escape. And now when I turn the camera around, you can see that I've been working directly in that axis. But not only that, with this feature enabled, now I can work and create the same curve and the same axis, but without working in that particular orthographic view. So for example, let's repeat this and create the same curve now. And escape. And now you can see that I'm still working exactly on the axis that I specified when I clicked this option. And I can click any of these axes here to limit the creation of that curve to that particular axis whilst in this perspective view. For example, if I turn on my perspective view, it makes no difference to this tool. It's always going to generate in the specific axis at the specific location that I have uh, that I have set in the dialog box. So that concludes this first look at generating curves. In the next videos, we'll continue to look in more depth as to the other features within the Q menu whilst generating our curves.
See you next time.